Hello everyone, my name is Elena aka Minty Mito. To any new viewers, welcome, and for any returning viewers, welcome back. Either way, I am so happy to have you here. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to anyone who's been watching my most recent couple of videos. I know I've mentioned my several strokes of bad luck this year, but I will say that I have been doing much better recently, so I just wanted to give that little update and to say thank you to everyone who was trying to check in. You guys are so sweet and I really, really appreciate it. But enough of that, we can start talking about some Sonic art now. I keep trying to say that I'm not solely a Sonic artist, but here I am with mostly Sonic art videos on my channel so far, including this one. Oh well. As promised in my previous video, I have for you all, at the very tail end of May, another video where I draw some of your guys' Sonic OCs that you sent in to me. This is the second part in what will hopefully become a monthly series, so if you haven't checked out the first part, I highly recommend you do so after watching this one. And since I'm planning on making this a regular series, if your OC is not featured in this video, it could maybe be featured in a future one. Emphasis on maybe because I can't guarantee anything. So if you would like to submit your Sonic OC for the chance for them to be drawn in a future installment of this series, please fill out the form that is linked in the description. And I'll keep this series going as long as there's still a good amount of people who enjoy these videos. And you guys seem to like the last one, so if you end up liking this video, please click that like button and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more art challenges like this one. And with that being said, let's get started drawing your guys' amazing Sonic OCs. Okay, welcome to the time lapse, everyone. So first off, we are going to start with Sparky the Hedgehog. He was submitted by Cody, who also goes by at Pucopop. And just a note for everyone who's featured in this video, if they have any social media that they wanted me to include in the video, I will have that displayed on the screen in the top left corner. And Cody didn't specify which social medias were connected to this at, so I looked it up. And firstly, he's basically everywhere. And secondly, my god, his art is literally incredible. I'm assuming this is all him, so definitely go for follow Cody if you want to see some high quality Sonic fan art because his stuff is fantastic and beautiful. And thanks again for submitting your OC, Cody. I love your artwork and this character is so adorable and funny, so let's just get into talking about him. So he doesn't have much of a backstory, but his character is basically just, he's a Sonic fanboy. And similar to kind of how Amy used to be portrayed, except instead of actually being friends with Sonic, he's just somebody who is a huge fan and loves following Sonic around. He's sweet and helpful, but he's also very very dramatic and quote-unquote extra and would literally do anything to get closer to Sonic, who he calls Mr. Sonic. He is 100% genuine about his feelings, but he can be a bit too much to handle and Sonic is a little bit uncomfortable with Sparky, but eventually he grows on him a little bit. And he's basically just meant to stay as a one-sided gag. I like how under the power section Cody put that he has the power of love. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Yeah, anyways, I was just so happy to be reading about Sparky. I think he's such a cute cute and funny idea for an OC and his design is very simple but also very bold and I had a great time drawing him. For the pose, I basically just wanted it to look like he's chasing down Sonic and of course I had to add some hearts around him at the end and I also added a dotted texture because I've been liking that aesthetic lately and overall I am really happy with how it looks. I think he looks so cute and I hope that you also like it Cody and thank you so much for submitting Sparky and for introducing me to your art because your art is incredible. The next OC we have is Calypso the Hedgehog, who was submitted by Angel Lot. I really love your art style. It is so pretty, and so is this OC. Angel describes Calypso as a ninja-inspired character, and under the powers, abilities, weapons section, she wrote katana. I believe it was just a typo, and she was referring to a katana, like the long Japanese sword. But I also know there's a character named Katana in Mortal Kombat who has steel fans, and I didn't want to assume anything. I just decided to draw Calypso without any weapons, since she also didn't have one in the reference photo, but since I did know that she was ninja inspired, I tried to look up some fun action poses for this drawing, and I really liked the idea of her doing a high kick, so that's what I went with for this. I struggled a lot to get the pose down the way I wanted, even with a reference. Sometimes it's hard to just translate a human reference to a Sonic character because you're working with completely different anatomy that is entirely fictional, and while Sonic character anatomy is way more simple than human anatomy, of course, but they're structured so differently, I do have trouble just 
translating it, especially when it's not like a default Sonic character pose that I just have in my head already. But overall, I do think it turned out pretty well. Despite all the trouble I had capturing her pose, I did have a lot of fun drawing Calypso. I really like ninja style characters and so her outfit really spoke to me. And I'm glad that even though she's a really cool ninja character, she also has a lot of feminine characteristics and so I think this is just such a fun character design and so it was nice to do something different and also to challenge myself with a pose like this. At the end I added a little grid background and I put a noise overlay on top just to give it some texture and I like how it turned out. You'll notice with all of these I'm using different types of finishing touches just to experiment and play around with what I like. I've used this kind of noise overlay before and I always really like how it turns out even though it is pretty subtle especially from far away. Thanks again Angel for your submission. I had fun drawing Calypso and I hope that you like how she turned out. Next up, we have Celery, or Cell for short, the lemur, submitted by Kulazu, and he is a very cool and sassy character that can definitely become dangerous if you push the wrong buttons. Kulazu said that while she hasn't read the IDW comics yet, she is interested in maybe someday making a backstory for Cell related to Tangle the lemur, who was featured in the IDW comics, for those who don't know. I also have not read the IDW comics, but a lot of the original characters in them, including Tangle, have such cool designs and I am so curious about them so I'm gonna try to save up so I can buy the collection volume soon if I can. And as for Cell here, I really really love his design. I think he looks like the kind of character that would have a lot of fans. I don't know how to describe it. I had some trouble capturing his hair design but I am happy with what I came up with and hopefully it still feels accurate to the character. I really like the specific detail that Kulazu included that Celery's mouth takes the uwu shape when he smiles. I think it makes him look so cat-like and mischievous but also so cute at the same time. It felt very natural while drawing him. Like, even though we don't know his backstory, I feel like I can easily picture a strong personality based on his looks alone, which to me is the mark of a great character design. So thank you, Kulazu, for submitting him. I had a blast drawing him. I felt like I could do it without thinking too hard. It just came naturally to me. I don't know. It just, I guess this character design really spoke to me. And I really hope that you like my rendition of your OC. Next, we have Isolin the Deer, submitted by Laura Eo. I'm pretty sure that's how it's meant to be pronounced. I think it's Laura plus Io. So hopefully I did not get that incorrect. Also in her form, Laura Eo mentioned that she has a YouTube channel under the same name, but I couldn't find one under that name. However, I did find one called Lolzy Pop, which features the same artwork that was sent in to me. So I am assuming that this is you. So if it's not, please correct us in the comments. Somebody's stealing your identity, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure this is you. So. If you are interested in this character, feel free to go check out her channel. But I must say that I fell in love with this design the second I laid my eyes on it. I think she is just the most adorable, sweet looking character. And I love her color palette and her outfit. And this is just such a lovely design. And I love her name as well, like Iceland. It's so elegant. <laughs> it's so cute. In terms of Iceland's backstory, she was born in a small village in Ice Cape Zone. And when she was five years old, she was lost in a snowstorm and then got frostbite. While she was recovering, she noticed that she had gained ice powers and since then she's been training to fully control her powers. She's able to freeze things and make small ice fortresses. Her hat also has fabric antlers since she's sensitive about not having any antlers herself and I thought this was such an adorable detail. I'm not sure if I captured the antlers correctly based on the reference photo. I just went with the typical shape that I see on clip bar of reindeer basically so if I got that wrong I am so sorry. But Laura Eo said that Iceland is pretty shy which helped me to come up with the idea for this pose. I definitely had wanted her to be using her ice powers in this drawing, but since she's also very shy, I decided to make it more cute and gentle instead of powerful. So I tried to go with a do you want to build a snowman from Frozen sort of vibe. Another note is that I really had trouble drawing this hand, the one that's doing the snow powers there in the front. Um, I was just being stubborn and refusing to look up a reference or take a picture of my own hand. I don't know why, I was just in a mood, I guess, but the lesson here kids is to always have a reference, especially for hands, because hands never stop being hard to draw. And I am so happy with how she turned out. And again, I love this design so much. Drawing her was very, very fun for me. Thanks again to Laura Eo for her submission, and your character is too cute. Drawing her was so fun. I had a great time drawing her, and I really hope that you like how she turned out. And 
last but not least, we have a very unique Sonic OC named Husk, submitted by Miles. And notice that I didn't say what animal Husk is, and that's because they're not an animal OC. According to the creator, Miles, Husk is based off the concept of a DeviantArt Sonic base, which for those who don't know what this is, it's basically a blank base from which people can build a character from, and they were very popular on DeviantArt. And this concept is represented in their name, since DeviantArt Sonic bases are kind of like the husk of a Sonic character, which I thought was very clever wordplay. For Husk's backstory, they were found by Sonic in a forest, erupting from some plants, and their true origin is unknown, but it is possible that they are a nature god similar to Chaos from Sonic Adventure. And Husk is basically just a gray blob at first with no defining features, but they gain features based on who they've met. And so they have ears because they met Sonic, a tail because they met Tails, eyelashes because they met Amy, and the cuffs that they have are furry because they weren't able to recreate the fabric texture. Miles gave me permission to add more features to Husk if I wanted, so I decided to add Knuckles, crescent-shaped chest mark, shadows, colored stripes, and Rouge's boots. And since Husk is gray, I just made them have lighter or darker hues to represent the changes in color, like for the stripes and the chest mark. This one was the quickest to draw out of all of them, since Husk doesn't have any colors in their design, but I think it's actually my favorite in terms of how I drew it and how it turned out. I was really happy with the soft glowing effects that I added to make them feel more mystical, and I just think this is one of the most creative and original Sonic OCs I've ever seen, so thank you to Miles for introducing us all to this fun character. I feel like I personally could definitely see them being a real character in the Sonic universe. It's such a fun concept to me, I really like it. And it was so fun to draw them, so I really hope that you also like how it turned out, Miles. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoy drawing your guys' Sonic OCs. They're so fun and so creative. Please comment down below and let me know which of these OCs that I drew was your favorite. And I look forward to doing this challenge again next month. Don't forget, if you'd like a chance to be selected for a future Sonic OC video, be sure to fill out the form that I have linked in my description. If you'd like to further support me, please check out my Ko-fi page where you can leave me a tip or commission me. Either is much appreciated. Be sure to check my description for all the other important links like my socials and my BLM art fundraiser which is still ongoing until the store is sold out. There are four types of prints left. Just removed all the ones that were sold out just to clean up the store a little bit so go get them while you can to support these great organizations. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video which may or may not be Sonic related again depending on what kind of inspiration strikes but I am going to a con this weekend and I'm also seeing the new Spider-Verse movie on Friday so mayhaps one of those things will inspire a new fan art challenge or something. But until then, stay hydrated, take care of yourselves, get lots of rest, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!